Hello viewers, welcome back to this video lecture series on computer networks which is mainly on uh, topics from network layer, transport layer and application layer. In topic which I am going to discuss is on NAT, network address translation. This is one of the important topics in the chapter and in this uh, subject. Moreover, students are writing examinations for the college and universities. Most of the time a question on NAT is asked descriptive questions. So, you are going to give the explanation for the NAT along with an illustration. So, I have taken a simple network uh, diagram here in order to explain this concept of NAT. NAT which is called as network address translation. So, look at the heading network address translation. Address is getting translated. Which address? Network address. So, here we are talking about IPv4 addresses. So, an IPv4 address gets translated. Now, which type of IPv4 gets translated to which type is the question. So, you can always remember in this manner, the total addresses can be of two types, two categories. One can be the private addresses and the other one can be the public addresses. So, in one of my previous video lecture, I have explained about the blocks that are used for the private addresses. So, an organization can make, you make use of those uh, IPv4 addresses from the private block and can communicate with each other. As long as a host does not want to communicate with a person in the internet or then it is very much possible that the uh, private IP addresses can communicate with each other without an internet connection. But once they want to communicate with their person which is there in the outside world, then definitely an internet connection is required. The main reason for going for this concept is to make efficient usage of the public IP addresses. See for example, uh, let me give you the uh, I mean to say uh, why the requirement for NAT came into existence is basically what happens is an organization when it requests for the IPv4 addresses from the authority IANA, IANA always gives the IP addresses in terms of powers of 2 only. One uh, particular ISP has taken 2 to the power of 8, so that means 2 to the power of 8, 64 addresses are allotted. So, I have also told you that in a classless addressing, it you have to call it in terms of block. A block consists of what? A block can be of 2 to the power of 0, which is only one IP address, 2 to the power of 1, 2 addresses, 2 to the power of 2, 4 like this. So, here 2 to the power of 10, 1024 addresses, 2 to the power of 3, 8 addresses. Now, an organization has already requested and or ISP has requested for 2 to the power of 8, one block which is already given that is 8 IP addresses are given to the uh, organization. Now, in uh, the organization wants few more IP addresses. That time, when it makes a request for extra IP addresses, what happens is the always the addresses that are given are in the continuous fashion that is one condition from IANA all addresses will be in the continuous and also it will be only in terms of powers of 2. So, in that way this 2 to the power of 4 is already given to some organization, 2 to the power of 2 is given to another organization. This organization let us give some name organization A which has got how many 8 IP addresses previously he is now requesting for some more IPv4 addresses, but it cannot be granted because the next range of IP addresses is already given to some x, here the previous block is also assigned to some x. So, what this organization can do is, the organization can make use of the private IP addresses and make use of this whatever 8 public addresses it got with that. So, this particular concept of what private addresses, the process of converting the private IP addresses into public or global IP addresses is called as network address translation. 
and also the network address translation does the vice versa that is public IP will get converted to private IP. So hope you came to know now the need for this NAT that means this organization A can make use of the private IP addresses okay but this private IP addresses will not be what recognized in the in the internet so that's the reason all these private IP addresses whichever host are present in this range has to get converted into one public IP. Now in this example what uh, uh, let us assume the same organization A has taken some 20 private IP addresses which is starting from 178.18.3.1.3.2 like this up till 3.20. Now all these are 20 hosts in the this one organization. Now the one of the host in this or any of the any one uh, from this particular 20 host can communicate with the internet what with definitely the address is what IP uh, private. So what the uh, this one the router that is connecting the site that is the site using private addresses and the internet will convert what a private address into public address. Now look here this router which is connected one interface is connected to the site using private addresses the other interface is connected to the what the uh, internet. Now this interface has got what IP address 200.24.5.8 this can be used to communicate with anybody in the internet but this address which is on the other side is a private address that cannot be used fine and not and also these hosts which are having the private addresses cannot be used to communicate so but how do they communicate by using this by using what concept NAT concept so first let us assume that one particular host 3.1 source is what 178.18.3.1 wants to send a message to some other host in the internet which is 25.8.2.10 so this side you remember all the addresses in the internet as well as on the interface of the router are public addresses so now the router this host with private ip wants to communicate with a host with public ip so the destination is written here in the packet fine now this packet when it crosses this network okay that is when it crosses this site having private addresses the router which is connecting these two sites will replace the source address because the source address is private it cannot be recognized here what the router will do is it will replace this private with the public address 200.24.5.8 and the destination is same a25.82.10 so this way the packet can be sent so we have uh, in this way now 3.2 wants to communicate definitely when the source is 3.2 once again the router will replace the source with the public now the packet will reaches this uh, destination host the destination host will reply the destination host has seen the source value this so destination will definitely write what the this the, the, the receiver will write in the source part that is now this becomes the source so it will write its own IP address 2.10 but here the destination becomes what 200.24.5.8 this host is not aware that the packet has come from 3.1 that is 178.18. It only knows that it has received from 200. This 200 how it has come the router has replaced that 3.1 with this 5.8 the last two uh, decimal numbers I am just reading out. So it will include here then once again the router what it does is it knows that this packet has to go to 3.1 how it will come to know when this when it received this packet for the first time 
it will maintain a table called as translation table. The router will maintain a table called as translation table and in the translation table it will write ok from the private side the private IP address the source IP address is from 178.18.3.1 and uh, what is this? this this is the global IP or public IP or so it is 225.8.2.10 this information it will maintain in the table for the first time when, like when the this 3.1 wants to send a message to 25 so in the reverse path that is when it is receiving the reply it will refer the translation table and it will see that this 25.8.2.10 wants to give the reply to which one 3.1 fine so when it crosses this side the packet the router will replace now the destination as 178.18.3.1 and the source will be definitely what now this time 22.10 it has come from 25 and it is reaching 3.1 this way it is converting what private ip address to public ip address and back this private public ad, IP address to private IP address. This is the concept for the translation table. But let us assume that 178.8.3.2 also wants to communicate with the same server having an IP address 25.8.2.10. Fine. So, when 3.2 is sending the packet, the router will replace the source with its global IP and then it will receive the reply and when it receives the reply, now look here, already it has maintained one value 3.1. When it receives the reply from 25.5, the router will not come to know whether the reply is for 3.1 or for, or for 3.2 because for both this private IP, both these private hosts have communicated with the same server. For that reason, this translation table can have some additional information. What additional information? It can include the port number. So, private IP you can say internal IP, global IP you can say external IP. So, here you can say external port number. This is what the private port numbers or the internal port numbers. So, a unique number is given as a port number which identifies a particular session or a particular post a process. Now, as an IP identifies a U particular host, the port number will identify a particular process. So, let us take for example, these are the port numbers. So, when the port numbers are also included in the translation table and when the reply comes from this server, that time when it refers the translation table because the combination of what? the combination of the source IP address. This is one, this is the one which is sending the reply, no? So, this becomes the source address. The combination of the source IP address and the destination port number will make the packet reach the correct private host. So, this is how the column, the values are maintained here in the translation table. So, definitely it will help what saving the public IP addresses for, let, 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 let us take one example like for 20 IP addresses, you are making use of one uh, global uh, IP address. The, let us take the organization has got only four public IP addresses, but the organization is having some 80 private IP addresses for all that see normally suppose if this NAT functionality was not there all 80 
public IP addresses the organization should take and each of this public IP address should get registered first of all. So, expenses are more. But for private IP addresses, there is no need for registration. So, that is the reason the organization will take this private IP addresses. It has got some 80 private IP addresses. Let us assume it can be any number. Now, for each of the 20 IP addresses, it is making use of one public IP address and the communication is happening smoothly. So, this way we can make use of or efficient use of the uh, IPv4 public addresses. Hope you have understood the concept of NAT. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.